Okay, let's have a look now. I just we leave off. Um, I think we did 55, so we're on to 56 now. An American tourist visits Paris and must convert US dollars to euros, which can be done using the function euro, euros. Um, 0.79x okay but then later they have to convert the remaining dollar uh, euros back into dollars so that is 1.245x um, find the composite function that converts directly from us dollars to us dollars via euros so they'd start off with x dollars which gets converted into euros and then that gets converted back to dollars and um this function here it should be uh, something like zero point something x because you should end up doing converting and converting back should leave you well, usually it leaves you worse off unless, uh, well, actually we don't know which way the currency fluctuated, so could be better off. It could be better or worse off. So let's see what happens. Okay. Um. Okay. Oops! What did I miss? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, you make little multiplies. There we go. Yeah, it looks like they're about two percent worse off. So um, that would be they lost out by about two percent. Okay. Use A to determine how many US dollars the tourist would get back at the end of her trip if she converted an extra 200 when she arrived in Paris. Okay, let's read this again carefully. Use A to determine how many US dollars the tourist would get back at the end of the trip if she converted an extra $200 when she arrived in Paris. So I'm assuming that she converted $200 needlessly. So, um, do we need to know how much she lost or just how much she get back? Yeah, 196.71, I guess. Okay, well, I think that's all okay. Yeah, okay, I think this is all okay. Let's clear this off now. Okay. Um, the manager of a skateboard shop pays his workers a monthly salary of seven fifty plus commission eight fifty per skateboard. Write a function that models a worker's monthly salary. So it is a base seven fifty plus eight fifty times x. Okay. <clears throat> Find the a. Uh, Approximate monthly salary when a worker sells 25, 40, or 55. Okay. Now, I noticed the answer is when they ask for an approximate value, um, they round it to the nearest whole number, which seems a bit needless because it's only a two decimal place number. So, like, what what's the point in doing that? I, I don't follow. They don't... It's okay, so there's a bit of inconsistency here. Um, it says approximate, but actually it's exact. So I think the word approximate needs to be deleted. Well, we'll see what answers we get now. S25, S40, S55. Yeah, these are all exact. There's no need for the word approximate. 
Use the intersect feature on a graphing calculator to determine the number of skateboards that must be sold for a worker to earn a monthly income of 1400 Well, I'm not using a graphing calculator, I'm using uh, the algebra software, which it recommends uh, that one could use for these questions. So I would have to do something like Sol. But they want me to use intersect. So to make it as close to the graphing calculator as possible, I'll say solve y equals um, sx and uh, y equals 1400. And we're solving for x and y. Uh, okay, I think that looks okay. Let's have a look. So, um, what are we looking for? Exact or approximate? I dislike. Okay. Um, so there's X is in a whole number. So if the worker wants to earn 1400, you have to um, round up because that's the goal 1400 and rounding down would leave you short so let's just see let's just round 1300 over it's 17 76 now i think oh does round round off or round truncate um that's a truncation it's actually 76 point something so really it should be like this and we can confirm that um, if we calculate S76 and then S77. You see, 76 would leave you short. It has to be 77. It's an odd question, so it has an answer at the back. Let's see what they go with. 77. Good, good. So they rounded up. So that's that's nice to see that they've done that. Um, <laughs> yep, yep, they're all matching up. That's great. That's great. Okay, fifty eight now. Okay graphing time i've not used the graphing feature yet so let's see how uh easy or hard this is to use let's maybe type in the function first y equals oh is it square root or do i have to fully type it out mm, i'll check Yeah, okay. Uh, looks like it's minus one to 10. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I wonder, can I just type in percent I want? Is this smart enough to know I'm referring to? Hmm. Hmm. Unclose parentheses. Ah. What's going on here? One moment. So. 
two problems. Um, in maxima, you don't need to say, or you shouldn't say y equals here. You should just state the x function only. And also, because uh, I highlighted this, I copied the semicolon. So there's actually a semicolon here that I didn't see. So um, this is the graph made now. And you can see it, it matches up with what's in the uh, book, minus 1 to 10. Uh, the y, I could have gone down a little bit more on the y. But anyways, we are looking for x and y intercepts. OK, so let's see now. Solve, and then it's Let's, let's try again, percent 01, percent 01, um, x, y, and then we'll, we'll solve first when x is zero. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so zero tree, which matches up with the graph. It does cross it there with zero tree. That's the very faint y-axis. And then let's then find where it crosses the x-axis. So that's when y is zero. Whoops. Alt. <laughs> Solve. No. Oh, okay. Why did it not give me a solution here? That's quite weird. Hmm. Weird. I'm surprised it's not. It does cross the x axis, doesn't it? So why is it failing to give me a solution here? Let me mess around a bit. Sorry, I've just realized somehow a P snuck in here. I don't know how that happened. Oh, let, let's try again. Why do I keep getting... Oh, the P is beside the bracket. That's why I keep mistyping it. Mismatch parentheses. There we go. Oh, I just can't type today. Okay, now let me just see if I get rid of this. Okay. I'm very confused why this isn't working. Very confused. As you can tell, I'm kind of new to Maxima, and I'm confused why this doesn't work. But if I delete the y equals zero and manually replace the y with zero, then it does work. And frankly, I wasn't quite expecting that. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit strange to me. Um, I'm not going to say it's a problem with Maxima. That would be extremely arrogant. Obviously, I'm not skilled enough just yet using Maxima. But, um, I mean, I can show you. Like, if I did this in Derive, I won't have as much trouble. Oh, 
anyways, the intercepts are correct, minus 1 and 9, and then 3 on the y-axis. But if I type these in, let me show you what I'm talking about. Y, y equals square root 25 minus x minus 4 squared, and then y equals 0. And I can type solve system those two equations on uh, line 1 and line 2, solve for x and y. So, you know, as you can see, the syntax is very similar. Solve the two functions in square parentheses and the variables in square parentheses. And that's what I was trying to do in Maxima. And um, it works fine in Derive, um, but not in Maxima. It's a real head scratcher. Anybody watching this video that can enlighten me, please do so in the comments. I'd really like to know what's going on here. That'd be really, really appreciated. Um, okay, well, that's the end of exercise 1.1. So hopefully tomorrow we'll start on 1.2. Okay, thanks for watching.